Friends, the gadget you are using to watch this video is an electronic device. So our world is full of these electronic devices and these devices are like magical gadgets. So if you look at a family, you will see that almost every person in the family possesses at least one mobile phone or if we talk about kids, then they would be playing around with some sort of digital devices for sure. So if I take an example of my son, he loves playing games and the electronic device he plays around with is his wireless game controller. So if we look at the pandemic situation, children in our families are now habitual with these devices like a pro because for around two years, they had been studying from home and this was possible only due to the digital technology. So let's consider my mobile phone. This is an electronic gadget. So in the same way, it could be your phone, your laptop or personal computer. So in short, all of these are digital electronic devices and the way they work is pretty much like a magic. So friends, if you go back in time and look at the old generation of people, the concepts or things that people used to imagine has now become a reality. So the topic that we are going to be discussing is going to be very interesting and we are going to talk about the electronic devices or the digital technology, especially the things they do with data. So when I say data, then it could be your documents, your pictures, your video files or a website or application code that we access using these devices. So it could also involve messaging services that let people talk to each other. So it won't be wrong in saying that the mobile phones, laptops, tablets or gaming controllers are nothing but the electronic marvels. Now the enchanting part is how these devices work and it's like a modern day magic. But here is the twist and there's a simple math that goes behind it. So please do not run away or don't let toward the word math scare you away as I have tried to explain digital technology in such a way that anyone even without a mathematical background can understand it. So trust me, it is a very interesting concept that affects all of us and importantly happening right around us. So in this video, we are going to understand the secrets of how data is transferred, how digital devices operate and how files move across the internet or between computers using electronic and digital technology. So by the end, you will witness the magic unfold and I am confident that your perspective on the world will be changed forever. So let's crack the code and understand how digital devices work. So friends, over the past few decades, people have become really good at electronics and come up with many amazing inventions. And guess what? Behind all these cool inventions, it's like a magic. A technique that lets us send information super fast, almost like it's traveling at the speed of light. So we call it electronic data transfer. So friends, if you are interested and want to dig deeper, you can go through my videos on OSI model where I have covered every minute aspect of how the communication happens through various layers of OSI or TCP IP model. So now coming back to our topic. So if you go back in history, you will see that humans have been exchanging information and communicating with each other. And this led to the actual development of various languages. So initially information was conveyed through speech or in writing. See this. Jabba. 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 So interestingly, even today, who aren't able to speak also find ways to communicate, right? So communication could persist even without a shared language, but 
of course it had some limitations so when these machines first appeared in front of the mankind of course through the contributions by many scientists so they have started finding out ways to harness them for transferring information so as we all know it's a human tendency to try and find out ways to make use of something that can benefit them so here we are talking about the evolution of digital technology and understand how it works so to answer the question on how to utilize these machines it gave birth to the field of electronics which makes use of wires and circuitry to transmit information and data so we are aware that computers rely on binary language for sending and receiving or storing the information and when i refer to machines i'm talking about electronic circuitry wires and the electricity so friends information is exchanged using specific state or signal known as electronic signals in digital technology so when we talk about electronic signals or electronic pulses it can either be on or off and scientists have crafted a binary language around this so this actually gave birth to the binary language known as the language of electronic machines so this is of course as it was developed with a keen understanding of electronics so let's grasp this concept with a simple example of a lamp so like a lamp can be turned off or on electronic signals follow the same principle they can either be on or off and initially this was the extent of what was possible so now considering the on off scenario imagine i create a code using these signals to convey the english letter a so if we use this on or off mechanism to encode information and build an electronic communication system around it we can convey a variety of information so these signals can be compiled into complex patterns and sent from one place to another and upon reaching the destination the information can be decoded to extract the intended message so if you look at the electronic signals they are of two types or i would say they come in two flavors so analog and digital so let's think of it this way if we go back in the day those old school reel cameras they snapped photos using analog signals but today's cameras they all about digital signals when capturing pictures similarly remember those round discs for music records friends those circular discs or round shaped discs stored music in the form of analog signals so if we fast forward to now our phones or music players or recording systems they are all about using digital signals and the information is stored in a digital format so i hope this is making sense to you as well so the basic difference between analog and digital boils down to the concept of continuity so for the purpose of demonstration so if you look at if you see this thread running through these small golden balls if you focus the thread it's like analog smooth and continuous but look at the small golden balls they are separate and discrete things so nature is a great example of continuity things like the rising sun sunset the waves of water or the moon changing so they are all in a constant state of flow but not everything around us follows this flow so man made stuff like steps um, are usually separate and each step has its own space but if you look at the hilly space the surface is smooth and continuous so if we think of the watches some are analog and the hands keep moving smoothly and other ones are digital so showing a clear change in time 
so in analog clocks the hand moves continuously but in digital clock the next second appears right after the previous one the hands of analog watch have to cover a certain distance between two time markings without skipping but when it is a digital watch it's like steps one second after another without showing the in between time all right so let me break it down for you so in simple terms analog signals keep recording data smoothly like a continuous flow and on the other hand digital data records information in parts and these parts are carefully created so we can extract information or message we need so it's like breaking down data into pieces to create a kind of illusion ise hum hindi mein bhram bhi kehte hain so friends let me show you this with the help of a, an example so if you look at my picture so this looks like a uh, me right if you search me on google you will see a lot of pictures but let me tell you that this is not me so this is my illusion i would say so if you zoom in and look at the actual image you will see that there are small small tiny pixels using which this particular photo or uh, picture is created so it is actually uh, made up of millions of pixels each with distinct color and arranged or compacted in such a way that if we zoom out let me zoom out so if we zoom out it looks like me so if you zoom in on my photo you will see tiny pixels these pixels are arranged in a way that tricks your eyes into seeing an illusion of me so when you zoom out it looks like my real picture but it's not really me it's ultimately my illusion i would say so i hope you are catching what i'm trying to say so basically when you zoom in it's a mix of millions of pixels arranged to create an illusion let me share something cool about colors friends we have been taught that there are seven colors but it's not exactly like that so actually to make it easier for us to understand we sort of group these colors into seven categories but in real colors come in a lot of types different reds different greens different blues and many more so now here is the interesting part and as we all know computers only understand numbers and not colors so again this is little tricky so we use numbers to tell the machine about the colors so you only need three colors red green and blue rgb to create thousands of different colors on a computer and by adjusting the amount of red the amount of green and the amount of blue and mixing them together you get all sorts of colors cool right so when you see my picture on the computer it's uh, it's made using just these three colors rgb so each pixel in the picture holds info about how much red how much green and how much blue color should be there so from an electronics standpoint every pixel in a digital image is a color and we represent that color with a number so using rgb color coding a specific color is assigned to each pixel and this information travels through the wire using these numbers and other devices recreate the same picture just like it looks so in the real world so figuring out which color goes where is all decided by the numbers and these numbers are nothing but the digits which are zeros and ones and from the word digit we call this technology as digital 
technology. Now, here is something cool and very interesting. So using just two numbers, we can create more numbers. And these two numbers are zeros and ones. So let me give you an example. Imagine I want to create my nickname using binary. So to write DJ, it's done like this. So if you open any website uh, to convert characters to binary language, so let me convert the letters in binary using rapidtables.com. So consider you want to write letter D in electronic language or binary language. It will be represented as 01000100. And in the similar way, it will be 01001010 for letter J. So if I combine them, it becomes 01000100. 1010. So this number is a binary conversion of my nickname DJ. Hope this is making sense to you. Now what is left is the signaling part. Now the circuitry makes use of this binary language and translate that into electronic signals. So where signal is off, there is a zero and wherever we send an on signal, then it is a binary value one. So here is the deal. Using binary, you can encode all sorts of information. Uh, the only thing to make the recipient device understand this is to know the secret sauce to decode it. So there needs to be a kind of understanding between devices on how to encode and decode. So friends, we, we are already doing this but let's break down how it works electronically so think of like a torch we can make it on and off in the same way signals uh, are encoded and then send this data to other computer through wires or wireless technology so i'm trying to emphasize that the whole process might seem like we are transferring an image, data, or a document, but in reality, it, so it's all about recreating, or I can say encoding while sending and decoding while receiving, and that's the gist of it. Now let's talk about our voices. They are like waves with different properties, frequency, amplitude, pitch, so we encode these properties into numbers and send them to another computer. So when we are on a call or sharing music file online, the recipient's computer decodes these numbers to recreate the actual voice or music. So it's like the digital world has its own language and we are speaking in numbers and signals. So imagine you are here. So imagine you are here. Uh, watching this video right so check this out my voice is being saved on the computer and thanks to this microphone so it's capturing when and how i'm talking all those pitch changes my voice modulations uh, you name it all turned into numbers so meanwhile my fancy sony mirrorless camera is grabbing my every move and now both the voice and the moves are then mixed into a video using OBS Studio. And finally it is stored on the computer using binary before I actually uploaded it to YouTube. Now while you are watching this video on YouTube, the browser is decoding all of this wizardry, creating this illusion of the scene I recorded, my voice, my moves, all of it. So it's like you are right there on my channel. So with this, you understand that how well these numbers come into play, making electronic signals that get sent your way. Your computer then decodes these signals, figuring out the format, the software, and all that jazz making sounds uh, through magnetic waves, creating motion on your screen uh, with pixels. So for the video, uh, my camera is basically 
capturing multiple photos snapping every pose uh, every nuance and turning it into a fast paced movie so these numbers are like little choreographers i would say making it seem like i am chatting with you but in reality your phone or computer is the maestro bringing it all back to life so hope you find this really cool the digital world we are living in it's basically built on illusions and by now it must be making a perfect sense to all of you friends let me tell you a very very important thing do you know that our brain sees less but dreams big now again this is the brain's magic so it can grasp a lot with just a hint without drowning into the details so that's why illusions work and that's why my friends the digital world rocks today so and this is why because our ears eyes nose and all our senses don't demand perfect info so the data we get our brain turns into turns it into a grand illusion now like we have brothers cousins the digital technology also has cousin to it so like digital there is another category of signals that we are going to talk about which is analog signals so friends nature crafts these signals and we often turn them into digital using some math so light and sound are both energy forms but they take different routes to have their own special vibes so light for example is like a dance of electric and magnetic fields also known as electromagnetic radiation sound on the other hand is a wave moving through air or whatever it finds so compressing and rarefying particles create these pressure waves and we hear around our ears so finally this is simple physics right everything around us like the scenes of trees bird sounds or even our own voices are like continuous analog waves but guess what we can turn them into something more manageable so here i mean to say the binary numbers again so yes that's right so back in the day when people first started recording this analog stuff it was a bit wild mimicking sounds uh, cave paintings real cameras you name it all that was using it was nothing but the analog signals but the main problem is the tapes usually get damaged due to wear and tear or how they are used uh reels get damaged over the period paintings get faded and uh, while we transfer them on the internet or uh, on the wire there is a huge noise while sharing analog signals so some sort of noise will definitely get added so fast forward to the digital era things got way smoother less hassle no wear and tear and that's why we are all currently using digital devices now so the phones laptops tvs or televisions you name it it's probably digital now and that's what makes this digital era so much successful so in this video i have tried my best to make it uh, make you understand how digital and analog works how the information is created how it is transferred and finally stored digitally so in short uh, how this whole digital and analog thing works so let me share something cool about something that a genius mathematician has said so it was paul dirick an awesome mathematician so he once said that if there is a god then he must be a great mathematician so this is really mind blowing right so when we look at the beautiful nature around us it's like a masterpiece of math everything moves so seamlessly that there is no room 
for mistakes and nature is just nailing it before we conclude with this video if you want to dive deeper then i would suggest you to check out the ted talk the name of the ted talk is do we see reality as it is so if you are into movies then you may want to watch the movie matrix or avatar or avatar we call it as so these movies are really worth to watch so they don't exactly talk about analog or digital but you'll get what i'm trying to say and you can clearly relate that to the topic that we just discussed so with this we come to the end of this video and i hope you find this video helpful so on this note if you find this video helpful or useful then i would request you to send me some digital signals using this digital technology again by clicking like share and subscribe button so due to time limitation we could only understand the theory but you can do the practical uh, by sharing comments on how i can make this even more better so with this i would like to thank you for staying back with me for such a long and uh, hope to see you in my next video thank you